Chapter 1. The Art of Management – An In-Depth Look into the Machinations of Management Management describes planning, organizing, leading, motivating, and controlling the resources of an organization to reach its goals efficiently and effectively. It entails the careful orchestration of the many parts of an organization to achieve an endpoint. Management ensures all the working parts of an organization are geared towards success and profit. Management isn't only applicable in firms or corporations. It is essential in just about every organization. There are examples of organizations in every shape of life. Organization refers to a collection of people who are involved in pursuing defined objectives. It can also be referred to as the second most crucial managerial function that coordinates employees' work, procures resources, and combines the two to pursue the company's goals. A manager must devise workable strategies that will maximize output and profit. A manager is an individual that is responsible for the supervision and motivation of a firm's employees. They are also in charge of directing the running and progress of an organization. A good manager makes it his duty to adequately handle the organization's affairs to maximize output and profit at the same time. If a manager cannot properly manage his resources, human, financial, etc., he is sure to fail and will get replaced. Some managers struggle with finding the proper techniques to apply to break even, but Eliahu Goldrat has a solution in this educative and captivating piece of literature. He outlines what causes businesses to experience hard times and how to handle them when they arise. The goal of management is to maximize profit while making sure the resources are safe. If you want to be a good manager, this is the tidbit for you. Chapter 2. A good manager can observe a system and identify obstacles to its productivity. When it comes to running a business, there may be certain limitations one might encounter. These constraints hamper productivity and cause the company to lose money instead of making a profit. The goal is to identify them and find solutions to them, while maximizing output and profit. In running an organization or firm, it pays to be observant and always ready to pick apart the reports. The aim of a manager should be to seek out a way to increase throughput, the rate at which the system generates money through sales net of variable costs. This outcome means that the manager's sole responsibility is to increase the value the system adds in monetary profit. They do this by first evaluating the design and identifying any obstacles to the system's optimal performance. This limitation is usually the determining factor to the overall speed of an operation. A limitation to the smooth running of a system is called a bottleneck. This refers to any process or chain of processes that affect the capacity of the whole system. It stalls production, supply overstock, pressure from customers, and low employee morale. If left unchecked, it will continue to hinder productivity if it persists, and your organization will suffer the loss. Bottlenecks can be as simple as missing equipment or a shortage of a particular resource needed to run the system. It can be in the form of a dispute among members of staff or a badly functioning machine in a factory. Whatever it is, it will continue to stall productivity if it isn't handled, and your organization will suffer the loss. How can one identify such productivity-stopping obstacles in a system? One is to take complete stock of the inventory, check for any irregularity in throughput, and then place the process or series of processes receiving high input and lower output. When a process or staff member receives high value but doesn't churn out the same or a better return, it should get tended to immediately. Since the strength of the chain is determined by the weakest link, then the first step to improve an organization must be to identify the weakest link. Eliahu M. Goldratt Chapter 3 An Intelligent Manager Should Try to Utilize Any Bottleneck to the Company's Advantage a continued permittance of shortcomings will spell doom for any organization, and it would be unwise to leave such unchecked. So, what then is the solution when a bottleneck gets identified? The manager should use it to his advantage. But how? By measuring progress or a lack of it. Once you identify the blockage or blockages, your goal is to find a way to maximize the value placed on the process to increase capacity. You must ensure that all machinery in your organization is always running on quality parts to aid optimal productivity. The goal is to make money, so whatever will maximize profit should be given more attention and effort. The first thing for any manager looking to maximize output is not to get overly worried about overproduction. 
Stick to your production quotas while attending to blockages in the system. You can increase the bottleneck's capacity, adding more value to it to boost its performance. If the problem is underperforming equipment, you should either get a replacement or backup equipment that helps increase its working capacity. If it's a staff or a group of staff, you should try to set up training or hire new staff to handle the responsibility. The process or chain of operations identified as bottlenecks must receive only quality parts and operators. To effectively manage productivity, you must monitor the production schedule to isolate any drawbacks to the system. If there are any shortcomings, the goal for the manager is to increase the time the operation would spend working since it naturally lags behind all the other processes. The manager should ensure a reduction in downtime. Whatever break is taken from the process is a potential increment to the hampering effect of the bottleneck. If you cannot minimize downtime to a safe level, you should consider reducing the responsibilities that people and machines have to handle. A balanced plant is essentially what every manufacturing manager has struggled to achieve in the Western world. It's a plant where the capacity of every resource is balanced exactly with demand from the market. Eliahu M. Goldratt Chapter 4. The constraints that are within members of staff or human resources should be handled using clear communications. Sometimes the bottleneck can be a problem with administration or a conflict amongst members of staff. It can also be a hurdle the organization cannot get past in the industry, a strategy that has repeatedly failed to turn inaccurate results. A good way to resolve this kind of problem is through a very effective query technique that seeks clarity of ideas and conclusions by asking a series of questions. This method, also known as the Socratic method, is a query learning style where individuals are asked question after question to expose contradictions between the answers and thoughts to arrive at a solid, tenable conclusion. The Socratic method helps foster internal conflict resolution as it challenges the recipients to think critically and arrive at a clear and logical conclusion. It seeks to eliminate all evidence of contradictory statements or beliefs in a conclusion. This method is a tested method for team building as it fosters a culture of internal resolution instead of sourcing for external help. When an organization is faced with a bottleneck in the form of a setback in strategy or sales for a certain period, Using the Socratic method, they ask the crucial questions. What went wrong? What can be done? How do we do it? When can we do it? This way, there is little chance of any contradictory assertions or conclusions. Instead of simply piling opinions on one another, each is queried for relevance and thrown out or accepted. Its importance and relevance speak for themselves as the Socratic method helps to eliminate misconceptions and contradictory conclusions. For a greater chance of success, teams are encouraged to avoid contradictory conclusions. When it comes to interpersonal bottlenecks, a problem with a staff underperforming, for example, they are also engaged in the Socratic method to ascertain what might be hampering their performance and provide an adequate solution for it afterward. This technique builds healthy accountability and fosters the atmosphere for always asking questions to ensure staff members. Did you know? Time once wrote that the profession with the most psychopaths is that of the CEO. It seems that executives have a 4% chance of having some type of personality disorder, which is four times the average population's chances of having one. Narcissism is one of the ones at the top of the list in the group. Chapter 5. To get the best out of your production process, commit more resources to each working part. In the manufacturing sector, you should consider subordinating other processes to give the limiting process more attention, expertise, and resources. This way, the focus of everyone in your team is to get the process or processes up to speed. Bottlenecks result in slowed production and overpiling of inventory, and as such, must be avoided at all costs. A bottleneck is almost always going to be present as long as a process exists. It may be a tiny or huge flaw but it causes damage to the total output of the unit. As pointed out in the previous chapters, there are several ways to handle such problems, but we shall discuss one more practical method in this chapter. With equipment underperforming, you can choose to dump it and pack up shop or get money to replace it. Both options are cost ineffective. Instead, it would help if you considered cheaper ways to bolster its capacity by bringing in smaller equipment to help speed up its work 
or replace only the faulty parts that have been causing it to perform below expectations. Instead of incurring costs when a process keeps failing, you can move to help boost its performance. More time, effort, and resources get dedicated to the bottleneck's operations to increase productivity. If the equipment or process, or part of the process, is to get remedied, then it requires that you devote more attention to its capacity to increase. Once the equipment, process, or chain of processes receives an influx of resources, time, and human resources, its power will increase. It will be up to speed with the rest of the equipment, which will favor the organization. Chapter 6. Without the presence of trained and qualified staff, you run a risk of reduced productivity and output. Once you have increased a process by pumping in as many resources as necessary, the new situation you have created will need additional manpower. The bottleneck didn't need much staff or that many resources before, but the productivity and capacity have significantly increased, requiring additional personnel. This technique is known as elevating the constraint. Don't be satisfied with the increase in the bottleneck's capacity. You must now seek further increment to get it to function at total capacity. It ensures that the newly resolved bottleneck doesn't revert to being a blockage. To elevate the condition, you must increase the resources invested and staff to handle the process you're trying to enhance. Effectively improving the throughput of the system increases the bottleneck's capacity through investment, hiring new staff, and purchasing new equipment. A bottleneck remains the best way to monitor and measure the rate of success that a process can attain. Once you've reduced attention to the other parts of the process to increase the capacity of the limiting process, you must further increase your efforts. Since the bottleneck is key to maximizing throughput and profit, it is best to invest more once you notice increased productivity. The bottleneck offers managers a guideline of what to tweak, increase, and reduce. If the bottleneck is an area of land, say for the production of a particular crop, once you increase the investment into it in the form of an increased fertilizer, pesticides, and all the necessary equipment needed to boost productivity, the land will now produce a total capacity. The exact amount of the resources required to run below its total capacity will be inadequate to handle the new productivity. This is the essence of elevating the constraint. It is a dutiful increment of the number of resources such that it matches the unique capacity of the bottleneck. Be careful not to skip subordinating other processes before elevating the hindrance to avoid overproduction and a needless overstocking of inventory. Promoting the condition should only be embarked upon once you have reduced resources and attention to other processes and channeling it to the bottleneck. This way, you are sure that you are investing in a tested and trusted venture. Pouring resources onto a bottleneck before you subordinate other processes will lead to a loss of profit to the company. Chapter 7. When you dedicate more resources to the bottleneck, it translates into greater productivity. Once you increase the resources you put into a bottleneck, elevating the limitations, there is a tendency for inertia or complacency. Once a condition gets promoted, the system might experience a greater throughput but there is no way to regulate or measure the rate of success without a bottleneck in the system. One can get complacent once there is an increase in productivity, but the goal is to keep at it even more. Most managers disregard this and assume since there's an increase in throughput, it simply will continue. So why bother doing anything, at this moment giving into inertia? Inertia is dangerous for any organization because as you have improved the bottleneck's capacity, other equipment might arise that will become the new blockage and must get fixed. The goal is always to factor in at least one limiting process and keep tabs to know how to handle it whenever it arises. In most cases, this unwillingness to do anything extra to keep the throughput from growing becomes a bottleneck itself. The inertia results from satisfaction, from the current state of productivity, and of course, the increase in money it is making. Complacency in the face of progress can also become a bottleneck to deal with. When the elevated constraint becomes a bottleneck once more, or a new one arises, repeat these steps. Identify the bottleneck. Exploit it. Subordinate everything to attend to it. Elevate the bottleneck and constraint. Guard against inertia in the process. Conclusion The production process is key to a company's output and profit drive. 
It can be hampered by constraints known in this summary as bottlenecks or limiting processes. These are an inconvenient constraint in any organization and can cause a significant loss if left to run. They impede and hamper the smooth running of any organization, often in countless millions of dollars and personnel hours. However, since they are unavoidable, it is pertinent to accept their inevitability and source a way to exploit them to turn a profit instead. In this summary, we learned that a bottleneck can turn out to be a lucrative business venture if adequately harnessed. When overseeing a system, one must take out time to observe the process of the system, identify the limitation or limitations, and map out strategies to manage, exploit, and minimize to maximize profit. To be a successful manager, one must have a knack for problem-solving and hands-on experience, turning those problems into productive solutions. This skill is the way to ensure progress and productivity in any endeavor. Without this patient and watchful eye of the manager, most processes will continue to run into bottlenecks that will hinder the proper workings of the system. The manager must show interest in the organization's affairs, from the staff to the equipment to the finances. Bottlenecks not only make the job of a manager difficult, but they're also bad for profit. They're also an expensive hassle and can become a monumental task to overcome if left to linger. As such, managers need to be ready to identify, evaluate, rectify any bottlenecks in the system, and be prepared to utilize those unremovable. Try this. Treat every problem like a question and keep posing possible answers while scrutinizing all contradictions and adequacy in facts. When faced with a problem that reduces productivity, do not see it as a limit, but as a chance to learn and improve. Go through your production process next week, if you're in charge. Watch for limitations that can be removed to make your processes more efficient.